South Africa hosts one of the widest varieties of ghettos or townships in the world. A ghetto is a place where people of one race or one social group live together. They were set up during apartheid to house a mass of non-whites. Most of the larger ghettos in South Africa are located around cities. Many people left the rural areas seeking work in the growing cities. Still during apartheid, these people were not as welcomed in the richer areas because of the bigger white population. They made supposedly temporary townships for quick commutes, and so they could live among familiar people. The biggest ghettos in the terms of population are near two major cities of South Africa. Soweto is a township outside Johannesburg, hosting over 800,000 black South Africans. The second largest township is Mitchell's Plain, which is outside Cape Town. Mitchell's Plain is called a model township. It was built in the 70s for colorids and is now is home to around only 26,000 blacks. The Indians in South Africa couldn't get decent jobs since there were laws set forth forbidding it. The only jobs accessible to them were to work in gold mines and secondary and sugar industries. Not surprisingly, very few were wealthy. Most Indians got an average of $16.74 a week. Some even got as little as $5.02 a month. Since there was very little money to go around, education wasn't all that important. About 15.4% of Indian kids were educated. The bad safety situations and lack of job availability for blacks in cities contributes greatly to the poverty in these ghetto regions. A statistic on the CIA government library website states that the total infant mortality rate for all of South Africa is 42 deaths for every thousand infants. According to Steve Biko, an anti-apartheid activist during a time of strong discrimination, it is a miracle for black children to survive through adulthood in the ghettos. Many children are forced to balance getting an education and supporting their families with work. About 40% of children live in homes with no employed family members, and over half of the population of children live in poverty, with 1.7 million still living in shacks in the townships. A shocking 41% of blacks are unemployed, while only 6% of whites are. Another aspect of the terrible state of these townships is the health of the people. South Africa is number one in the world for people living with HIV-AIDS, as well as the most death caused by it. Since the times of apartheid, these statistics haven't changed much, and the lack of change is apparent when you look into the township's history. It's a normal. It's a normal. Real normal. Normal means white man. <laughs> That's me. Shout out your names again. Ricardo. I can go see. And, and shout Kalicha. One more time. Kalicha. Kalicha. One more time with energy. Okay, she's four. Three. Okay, when Five. When She's six, when She's ten. This is Kaz's Baba shop. Um, it's an informal baba We're in Side B now, which is also in Kailicha, but now this area, it used to be an informal settlement, but the people of this area now, what they've done, they've actually started their own housing scheme. Instead of waiting for the government to build them RTP homes, they would keep money and then every month build a house for one family, build a house for one family. That is why this area now has grown and we have less shacks in this area, And I'm, which is a great idea. If more people could actually start doing things on, on their own and, instead of waiting for the government, then we'll have less shacks in, in Okay. What's the difference between a formal and an informal? A f a f an informal, it's it's a house made from corrugated iron. In f that one, that house now, we call them shakes or informal. It's made from corrugated iron. But a house that is built by, by stones, that one is formal. Okay. Uh, she, uh, it's a Sunday chain today. Anyway, these are my friends. I'm JJ okay. from the back of the street. This is that's well, here in Zimbra's place, you are chilling. This is our friend. Yeah, this is you. This is you too. To a um, mobile phone. Okay. Yeah. Show me how loud you normally listen to music. Woo! It's very loud. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? I want a nice song now. Nice song. Where are we going? Nice song now. Now we can hear you.
this is Kifus. Um, my mother owns the place. Um, um, it's a pub and a restaurant. Um, people where they, they have drinks and they 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 they, they eat. <laughs> uh, we 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 play strictly jazz um, to accommodate our clientele. Um, we're busy renovating because I mean our space is small. Uh, we need we need more space for our clientele. In time for the World Cup. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're at the Lookout Hill. Um, this is where you get to see the whole view of Kailicha and see how Kailicha is big, how, how big Kailicha it is. Um, this area now is Lita Park, and further down there it's Harari. That's the warm Indian Ocean, Falls Bay. And this side it's um, Mitchell's Plain, which is the oldest, you know, Kailicha township. Um, yeah, it's all Mitchell's Plain, and you can still see the ocean also this side. So. In winter, it gets very cold. Before. Which is why we head back to Copenhagen for a hearty meal. You'll be having homemade steamed bread, uh, which is made from natty wheat flour. This is a very popular bread, um, especially here. We grew up making this bread. And then... The Passive Resistance Act led to many to be imprisoned for resisting laws. Gandhi was the first leader of the Passive Resistance. He helped them with the tax rebellion with 2,000 men, women, and children. Since all these people put up a fight, the South African government gave in. This is only the beginning of change for all the Indians. In the townships during the times of apartheid and liberation, protesters were determined to show their anger and desperation. They turned to burning state properties like schools and hospitals to show their anger towards the poor education and health care. Black soldiers were motivated to fight by the awful conditions they and their families lived in. The law that prohibited Indians from buying land prior to 1946 was the Ghetto Act. It cut off Indians from buying or occupying land if not bought prior to 1946. There were controlled and uncontrolled areas. The Indians weren't allowed to be in the controlled areas. Part of Mandela's cause to the end of apartheid and bettering of conditions of blacks was to build one million homes in the ghettos. This gave one million families proper shelter, running water, and electricity. Unfortunately, one million houses is not nearly enough. The houses built by the government were called informals, and the metal shacks were called informals. In South Africa, many of the rich whites live in the city, but in the rural areas, they don't have the same luck. A good portion of the whites live in ghettos, but ghetto is not a household word. Many of the people use the phrase squatter camps. People in these squatter camps have many different housing conditions, and the conditions are not all the same. People live in tents all the way up to trailers you would find in our neighborhood. Many of the homes don't have electricity either, so people don't have refrigerators or freezers like you and I do. Most of the people living in the squatter camps have cabinets for canned food that does not need to be refrigerated or frozen. In the camps, they have organized meals that is in a buffet style, so people stand and wait in line for their hot meals. And also, some people get care packages for food and other essential needs. Kids in these squatter camps pass time by playing with dolls, tires, or anything they can get their hands on. Many people smoke cigarettes and do drugs to keep them sane. The unemployment rate was 26% in 2004, but in recent years it has doubled and is now at 43.2% of all whites who are unemployed in South Africa, and it does not look like it's going down anytime soon. In the 2011 census, there were 4.5 million whites and 1.4 million white households residing in South Africa. Whites make up 9.6% of the total population. The average white household size is about three members. The experts ex estimate that 450,000 whites of a total population of 4.5 million, which is about 10%, have gone below the poverty line. In 1950, the Group Area Act was designed to create separate regions according to different races. People were forced to live in their regions by their race. It was made illegal to pass the boundaries without a permit. If you were caught, you were either sent back to your region or sent to jail. This was also set for whites, and was not just for the blacks, Indians, and all the other different people in the area. Yeah, play you now, you saw. No, it's broken the back. Oh, yeah. it's played all night then. Oh, yeah, just my thumb. Yeah. Yeah, what do you know about a blade of lacquer, you saw? We need to let it. It's lacquer, you saw. Is it? Yeah. It's not just a lacquer, man. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not going to talk to you. Yeah. 
Ja. Die brand. Het was een short van een lactische tijd. Okay, maar wat was die skare? Mensen zeer gekregen. Irene zei, ze is zijn dochter. Ja. Zij het zeer gekregen, waar je ernstig zit. Lelijke branden gehad. Ja. Zij was de laatste ene. Ruska, hier is zij. Ruska, kom eens zo. Ga met jou. Huh? Ze wees een beetje waar je oor als gebrand het. Is zo. Mijn arm. Kijk je, man. Mijn been. Ja, let de baie van die dinges. Baie... Ja, mijn been. Je rug. Ja. Je voel langs. Maar lekker eet, hoor. Kijk. Zij was die ergens dagstig. En hier. Maar uh, wat gebeur nou hier zo vandag? Vrouwens toe het geval die boom met die boom. En zo is vandag begraaf. Is het? Ja. Is dat alle mensen nou hier? Dat is alle mensen wat nou hier is en nou is die graf hier. Wel ons heen met die paltijd gevraag ons te helpen met die boom van ja. ons water raak. Hulle wees vertrek. Hulle wees vertrek ons te helpen. Hulle wees vertrek ons te helpen. Hulle wees vertrek ons te helpen. Dit is die boom wat um, laat ik een zaterdag aan om acht uur gevallen het en um, een leven gevat het. Zo, so, ik is maar hier gezet als bestuurder van het park om naar die mensen te kijken en om te geven voor die mensen. Ik is baie lief voor die mensen. Die mensen zijn mij zijn families en ik ken ergens nu mijn oma Irene, die groot mensen nu mijn ma Irene. Zo, so, ik is een moeder voor hulle en ik is een oma voor die kinders. So, um, voor mij gaat het om die leven wat die is. Uh, dit is wel wit blanke plakkers, maar voor mij is het niet plakkers niet. Dit is wit mensen wat gevallen het in die leven en alles verloren het en hier opgeland het. Die tent is leeg. Um, hier blijft niemand van die tent is net die gelos om uit te gaan. Die mens wat hier gebleid het terug verhuis Johannesburg toe. Hulle blijft plek gekry en werk gekry in Johannesburg. Um, wat ek baie dankbaar is voor vir hulle kinderkies. En dan is het voor oma en opa wat naar hier blijft, twee oude mensen, dierbare mensen. En dan komen ze dan bij die prachtige double story huisie, wat naar je gebouw is, wat bij je mooi is. En dan komen ze dan bij die oma zo'n prachtige groentetuin, wat hij nou van groenten geplant het, tomaties en millies. Although the ghettos are a sad reflection on the well-being of South Africa, the country is slowly improving. Families are finding homes, children are being fed, and adults are finding jobs. The government still has a lot to do to better the quality of the races, but the small improvements will soon build to make a healthier South Africa. <laughs>